Hello and welcome again in another episode of Beyond the Wheel. My name is Elias, I'm the driver and engineer from the Red Bull Drift Rodders and today we look into a really special battle. It was actually my first time against James the Machine Dean from Ireland. I was really looking forward to that battle. It was back in 2019 in front of our home crowds in Ferropolis. So this was an already many, many aspects that, that kind of got me excited. I went through the competition and made it to the top eight and there I met James Dean and how that looked like in the live stream, we will see right now. James Dean home with no trophies this weekend. Look at this, Elio Tony diving in behind James Dean. Yeah, he's right with him, Dave, and then James Dean's giving Elio Hutunji the perfect lead line. Look at the shallow angle though from Hutunji just to gain that proximity as they transition into our zone four. Elio Hutunji right with James Dean, bringing the fight to the former and current champion as they put back into outside zone five and onto the wall again. Eddie Hutaji really bringing it right now to James Dean. Incredible stuff. So let's jump right in again. So yeah, staying at the start line in this awesome venue, uh, it's already exciting, but having James Dean in front of you, so he was better qualified than me. So I had to chase first and I knew I had to give it all. So I was really focused, thumbs up to him always in the beginning of the Drift Masters battle. That is a really nice thing. And accelerating into third gear, clutch kick initiation. He left me a bit on a start, but right there, I started to close the gap. So he really filled the outer zone well there. And the most critical point in my eyes was the second outer zone on the second wall, because this one is really dangerous. And yeah, as you can see, I got really close there, so I almost tagged uh, his, his car, but I also didn't want to crash into him. So I think he got a bit too wide and lifted up a bit. And yeah, in the end, you, you just saw it here. So when we go back, um, being like super close in this region to his door, I pulled the e-brake just a tiny bit to not crash into him and not disturb him in his line because otherwise it would have been my fault. In that split second when I pulled the, the e-brake, uh, the, the distance got a bit more again, as you can see here now. Um, he left foot braked a bit to adjust his line and you also can see that the smoke starts to pour again from his car. So I'm just going back. Um, yeah, I think he was really a bit too wide until this point and that's the point where he really accelerated and I was unfortunately on the e-brake. But yeah, um, he pulled it away a little bit, but I closed the gap here again, transitioned uh, through the smoke and was able to yeah, more or less close the gap again. Um, so he had to ride the wall and he did a perfect job there. And I started to close it up again um, onto his wall. Uh, next transition through the smoke. This was a really tricky one because you actually, yeah, there you or I couldn't see anything. And going into the last turn, um, trying to, to give it all I have, but his car has yeah a lot of grip. Also a really good driver on, on board. So he pulled away a bit over the finish line. So there was about half a car length in between us. From, from the outside perspective, this was the first run. And we can go into a bit more detail. Let's look in another perspective. Start signal is going down, going through the gears, first, second, third gear, clutch kick, and he was already a bit away, so I had quite some distance here, but I managed to get closer and closer. He accelerated again here, but there he, I think he felt that he's a bit too wide, and this is the point where I was really close and was actually pulling the e-brake really quick uh, to not crash into him. And just after that, he pulled away a bit from me, tried to transition fast uh, with like low angle to gain the proximity again. And as you can see here, I just jumped onto his door again, tried to settle my car and to adjust the distance, get closer and closer. And yeah, here is a very critical point just before the transition. Um, as you can see, I pulled back a bit that his rear can transition in front of mine and 
I managed to go through the smoke and again jump onto his door here right after the transition. This is something I'm really looking forward to, to yeah, get the timing right. I mean, every drifter looks for that, that you really just jump on the door right back onto the door. And then I washed a bit, kind of bit too wide in the last turn and he pulled away from me tiny bit. So there was like half a car length distance. And now let's check out, I would say his chase run. So we changed the positions. Um, the smoke got out of my car. Machin helped me there. I was super excited with my chase run and now it was time to do a perfect lead run. So again, thumbs up at the start marshals and going off first gear, second gear, third gear and the clutch kick initiation. And there was also a small bit of separation in the beginning, uh, but James managed to gain the proximity back in the first turn in the end. Also transitioned nice and this one was the one point where I probably lost most points. As you can see, I'm about one and a half meters away from the second outer clipping zone and I tried to push my car back out in the in the zone but I couldn't really reach the wall. Last transition was fine. I was actually packing the wall um, and we're on the correct line but James was really close to me. So second lap I was leading um, looking at the lights, I was super excited, I was super super happy with my chase run. So I gave it all in my lead run and as you could see, yeah, James actually was really close um, when, when he followed me. Um, but also pulled a bit of a gap here in the first outer zone. Um, kind of similar distance, but he closed the gap a bit quicker than me and more consistent. And this one was a small, I had the timing a bit wrong after the first transition. So I couldn't reach out to the wall right away uh, from the beginning. So I worked myself out to the, to the wall again, uh, left foot brake twice here, as you could see, uh, just uh, here and there. That was basically to push my car out to the wall again as we had to drive uh, the, the outer side. James was just on my door, transitioned quite good. After the transition, small separation, but he gained the proximity really quick after that. And yeah, I mean, he did also a really good job, <laughs> an amazing job. And yeah, in the end, uh, the judges decided that he was the better one out of the two laps. I agree because I had quite a, a mistake in my in my lead run um, second turn i didn't reach out exactly from the beginning um, to the to the outer wall as you can see i'm getting out of the car and being super stoked <laughs> in front of the home crowd um, yeah waving to them they were cheering and it was just an amazing feeling being in that stadium in Ferropolis at the iron drift king after that yeah congratulations to to james he made it onto the podium this would be it for today. Really enjoyed it. I hope to see James back soon on the on the tracks again and hopefully battle him again. Because one thing is for sure, if you drive against the machine, you always can give it all. Because yeah, he, he's not there to play around. He always gives it 100% and you can just stick it to his door. And he normally does never do any mistakes. And this is yeah, where you as a chase driver have the most confident so this is even more more incredible seeing him doing that for all these years and each and every driver is so eager to drive against him and he's most of the times on top so this is just yeah have to to do like this here james yeah amazing driving and also wish you best of luck in the rec this time because this is a new adventure for him uh, thank you very much for watching and I say until next time, peace out.